Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and we're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the Daily Office Lectionary. Today for Monday, let's take a look at the lesson that's assigned from the letter to the Hebrews. Yes, we've jumped into, uh, we're already up to chapter number nine in this epistle. Again, this is a general epistle. Uh, it's a theological epistle in the sense that it's a trying to lay out a theological explanation for how uh, Jesus Christ is the fulfillment to the people of the Hebrews, the people of the Jews, the original covenant, that Jesus is, in, in fact, the Messiah. And so this draws from all sorts of, of Old Testament prophecies uh, and writings in order for us to understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of the God's promise. So on chapter 9, beginning at verse 15. <clears throat> and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also by necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it has no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Okay, so, so again, the writer of the Hebrews is reminding the people of Israel that the people of the original covenant, which was, in this case, he calls it a testament, the, new te the original testament, uh, that it was... It was signed, it was sealed in blood, that Moses sprinkled the books of the law with blood. Uh, and then, of course, the remission of sin was done in a symbolic way with uh, the, the scapegoat and the sacrifice of animals and the blood thrown on the altar, offering God uh, a sense of repentance for sin. Uh, but, of course, this is just a, a poor imitation of heavenly things, but that, in fact, it would be Jesus Christ himself, the one sufficient sacrifice once offered for the sin of the world, that Jesus Christ himself has been uh, the one who has paid the price for our sins by freely offering himself and by being without sin himself, right? The priest will continue to sin in his own life and the people continue to sin along to that. So the priest has to continually go into the, the temple, the old temple, it doesn't exist anymore, uh, and offer the sacrifices for sin. Jesus being without sin could make that one sufficient sacrifice once offered for the sin of the world. So anyway, so today, uh, as I said, uh, today is Monday. Uh, we do have Holy Communion today at 1215 and evening prayer at 4 o'clock. And I do hope that you can join us either in person or where you're watching this morning meditation. And may God grant you a Monday that is full of blessings.